all of business, almost, I don't care the industry, it's all relationships, it's all referrals, it's all, even in all, with all this digital stuff, we still like, before we hire and make a huge decision, you can look, read a hundred video testimonials. What do you do? You start calling around to your network of people that you trust yep. and you say, hey, are these guys legit? Will they follow through when it goes sideways, which things do? Will they follow through? Will they step up? Will they, will they take care of you? Will they fix it? Because nobody's perfect. And, and so it's the behind the scenes back chatter that lands you the six figure, seven figure, eight figure deals or not. It's not the, it's great to have cool graphics and cool yeah, websites yeah. and great brochures, but at the end of the day, you got to have the people behind you. That's the foundation. Boom, 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 boom. What's boom, up, everybody? Boom, You're boom, listening boom, to the boom, Hustle and Flow boom, Chart boom, podcast boom, with boom, your boys, boom, Matt Wolf boom, and boom, Joe Fear. Boom, boom. Wiki, Check wiki, it. Wiki. It's podcast time. All right, podcast, red lights on, let's go. Today, we are podcasting. Oh, surprise. This one, th- th- this episode is a gift to our audience. Why would you say that? It's Aren't just, they all? It's just, this one is or more is of a this gift. this one more, the most giftiest of them all? This is the giftiest episode ever. Well, <laughs> it must be. I guess that's what uh, John has made a career doing. Uh, John Rulin, that is. John Rulin. Of giftology so john is on the show and he's going to give you many gifts of knowledge mm. and um and how he gives gifts so he has a We've whole, said gifts way too many times already <laughs> i'm gaming the seo ness of audio if that's a thing in the future maybe maybe we'll see <laughs> so john ruland's on the show today from giftology and um the guy is Absolutely amazing when it comes to thoughtfulness and business and staying top of mind, growing relationships and referrals all through the art of gift gifting. Yeah. And he so. set up a he has like a, a checklist thing. I, I actually haven't opted in for it yet, but you've actually taken I a have. look at it yeah. over at uh, giftology system dot com. So I'll, I'll shout that out real quick. But what was like mm-hmm. what what do you get when you get that when you go there? So if you go there and when you go there, you get a spreadsheet actually that they made and it's like I don't know, like eight to ten tabs on this spreadsheet. And each tab is a step during his giftology process. And mm-hmm. John even said on the show that um, that's something that he gives away his, you know, very high tier clients because he works with some big companies as a whole agency in the background. But um, he's essentially giving you the framework. But, uh, you know, you'll see how quickly realize if you do this at scale, you know, you're probably going to need a little bit of help. Uh, but you're going to see the entire process from um, just basically, yeah, steps are what determine the ROI. So, like, figure out what the intention is, what's your strategy, is it one off, um, who to send it to, what's your budget, what's the gift, all these other different steps associated with it. Get it. It's worth its weight in gold. And even he said, you know, it's like Giftology, the book is also great. It's a little bit more theoretical. Whereas giftologysystem.com, that spreadsheet is very practical. So mm-hmm. you can actually use that thing as yeah. a tool. Cool. Yeah, go get that. That's I'm going to go get it. I haven't yet, um, but I will as soon as we finish recording uh-huh. this intro that we're doing. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but so. Uh, yeah, so with John, we're, we we go deep into this topic of giftology, like how to pick the right gift for people, how much money to spend. What if you have like a very small budget or you're just starting out, um, you know. The, you're in luck. Don't worry. Yeah. As we're, a small we're, business, you're probably at an advantage. Yeah, we're, we're going to cover all of this and we're going to talk about the power of gifting and how the power of gifting comes back to you and how you can sort of justify the cost so that you know you get roi or ror return on relationships right yep and uh, you can even learn how to gift better to your spouse yeah we do touch on that. so i asked john um okay well you're the rainmaker when it comes to gifts how do you still impress your wife if she knows your tricks Mm -hmm. so um if he can pull that off with his wife then i'm sure you can with your spouse or significant other Mm -hmm. um so yeah i mean there's a lot packed in this and at the end of the day like he wants people to show gratitude with action and not just words and lip service. And, you know, mm-hmm. there's, there's more to it. And, and, you know, this is something that can last and, and uh, like you were saying, generate returns and referrals and business and all that stuff. ROR. Yeah. And be top of mind. It really know? made me rethink of the amount of sh- hustle and flow chart shirts that we send out to people. <laughs> I know <laughs> we're, we're um, I think, yeah, it's interesting because we send a lot of swag and we know it's swag. We yeah. know it's not like a personalized gift. Um, and we will occasionally, and I said occasionally because we don't have a great system around it. Uh, send like a handwritten note or something along with it. But um, yeah, this is definitely gonna, we're, we're gonna shift some things around 
because I've definitely been gifted numerous times. I was talking about uh, one of them on the show, and that stuff just takes top of mind. Yeah, and typically, like, it's not going to be that much more expensive, or I mean, it's not rocket science, but uh, the impacts are felt for a long time. Yes, sir. So, um, so check out giftologysystem.com yes. <laughs> and uh, get the notes. We always have them. So uh, the two two weeks by the time this episode goes live, it'll uh, they'll be free for you if you go to hustleandflowchart.com slash comp, C-O-M-P, hustleandflowchart.com slash comp or text. Use your texting device and... Yeah, rotary phone. That one like works. That's that's Matt's now. I yeah. gave it to you. I gifted it. Yeah. You'll, you'll appreciate that. Less. You gifted me the rotary phone? Yeah, you can't have... Because remember, that was always my thing. Yeah. I gave it to you. You just don't remember or have it yet oh. maybe get lost in the mail i think i re-gifted but, it <laughs> <laughs> damn it all right well i was trying to yeah keep your social media usage down so you have a rotary phone you can't really get to the app there. yes so yes. get your rotary phone out and uh dial the number three or wine the number three eight four seven zero three eight four seven zero just one time uh mm -hmm. to the word comp send yes. the word comp c-o-m-p and on your rotary phone you you know you do the little right and then you just yell comp yeah oh just, is that how it works yeah if it's a rotary phone yeah. you just have to yell comp as loud as you can into your phone and um until the operator connects you, you yes to your text <laughs> to your to your free notes okay. and then we have some automations that happen in the background and it, somehow it, it finds its way to you yeah. somehow yeah it'll arrive in the mail um it's yeah. good maybe so three eight four seven zero is the number and the word is comp or hustle and flowchart.com slash comp whichever you choose be quick if you yell loud enough joe will hear it and just mail you something smoke signals work sometimes but there's a lot of weird fires in san diego so i might get a little confused don't yes. use smoke signals don't use smoke signals just yell <laughs> just yell like a crazy person i was gonna make a different joke about the smoke signals but i won't go there <laughs> that was for the will episode uh, all yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> let's, uh, right. Let's, with john today. <laughs> let's, let's go chat with john Hey, John, we're live now. Just want to make sure all the recording things all <laughs> set in place. Nah, man. We only did you have to do this twice, though. Uh, uh, yeah, that's true. true. <laughs> yeah. Well, you just all came good. from back from vacation, so props on, you know, on spending some time with us, man. Big, big respect for doing that. And because I know you got some wise words that I think a lot of folks just aren't aware of, you know, this whole paradigm shift in marketing and relationships and just generosity and gratitude. I think it's going to be interesting. Yeah. Yeah, man. Well, I'm excited to uh, to be able to pour into the tribe, and yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm coming back fresh after ten days away. So uh, hopefully, we can yeah you know, we can come at it from a different angle and and uh, do some fun things here. Yeah, yeah, super fresh. You said you just got off the plane what a couple hours ago? <laughs> yeah, I landed three hours ago. Yeah, literally. Like, got got in, got our you know twenty pieces of luggage with our four kids home settled. You know, tucked them in, had some Chipotle, and and uh, oh, nice. yeah, ducked, ducked out to the office. So yeah. It's, it's uh, literally hours ago. Nice. Well, let's, uh, yeah, we, uh, big shout out to Chris Kamitsos, uh, one of our buddies, you know, for making this connection happen. So I know whenever someone comes from Chris, always fascinating. So give us a scoop, yeah. man. I, I, you have an interesting background, and part of it involves uh, something I spent, like, I think a day or two in Cutco. You know, <laughs> did you really? That's awesome. I did. Yeah. And Matt's like, because I was like, was that with Matt? No, it was another buddy of mine. But that was like way before I started any online entrepreneurship stuff. But then I yeah. heard, oh, you're the number one guy, or, or were, or I don't know where the stat is, but like you're the baller of Cutco. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's, uh, yeah. So that, that was one of the, my starts. I started on a farm. You know, I'm, a, I'm an Ohio farm boy. I didn't grow up in the city. I didn't grow up in San Diego. I was one to live in San Diego growing up. I was like, man, I could be near the ocean, you know, it'd be amazing. But, um, but yeah, I, I out of desperation, I interned with Cutco back 20 years ago. Literally, I started June 6th of 2000. Whoa. Is when, and, and I was uh, 20 years old and was going to go be a med student. I was going to go be a chiropractor, a DO, and, um, and interned with Cutco to pay for med school. And, uh, and I thought if I lasted a summer, it'd be like a miracle. That <laughs> honestly was like, cause I, I didn't really have any sales background. I'm a farm kid. I was milking goats. Like, it wasn't <laughs> like I was like, you know, some like slick sales guy. Like I, I just didn't come from that background. But, uh, but my life changed because of that. I mean, I didn't realize at the time they have some of the best sales training literally in the world for right. college kids, like entrepreneurial training. You know, some of my best friends in the world 20 years later are Hal Elrod. You know, we vacation together, wrote Miracle yeah. Morning, John, yeah. John Broman from Front Row Dads. Like, if you look at the list of alumni of guys that have gone on to do interesting things, there's, there's about 1.5 million people that have sold Cutco in 70 years. Wow. 
Um, and so my life changed because of the training, but also because of a mentor. Um, I was dating a girl and her dad was an attorney and he was a rainmaker. Mm. Um, and so I pitched him the idea of giving away because he was always giving away things. Like mm -hmm. he was super generous. I pitched him the idea of giving away so pocket knives to all the clients. So they're all like CEOs of companies and they're into hunting and fishing. And and Paul was like, I don't want to order pocket knives. I want to order a hundred parry knives. Now these are not like 50 cent parry knives. Like, as you know, they're like 60, 70, $80 right. for one night. Yeah. So I'm like, Paul, you want to give a bunch of dudes like CEOs, like of companies, like a kitchen pool? Like why? <laughs> and uh, he's like, John, in 40 years in business, the reason I have more referrals, deal flow, access, all these things is that if you take care of the family in business, everything else takes care of itself. So that became like the kind of the lightning bolt moment of like, holy crap, this wasn't about knives. This wasn't about like, yes, this was about relationships. And I learned, you know, very quickly, all businesses of all sizes rise and fall based upon their relationships with clients, employees, media, investors, mentors. Mm -hmm. And so I started to mimic what I saw in Paul. He was 60 at the time. And I'm like, I'm 20. I'm going to mimic what this dude's doing for the next 40 years because I want to mm -hmm. be him someday. <laughs> And by the time I was a senior in college out of 1.5 million reps, I became Cutco's number one distributor in the history of the company wow. by applying these relationship building principles. So it's not like these woo woo ideas that like were born in academia. They literally like we've been applying these and we decided to put Medical on hold, built this agency that helps companies and small businesses um, outsource their gifting and using gifting, not as a check the box, but as a true business strategy. And so. The last 20 years, that's what we've been up to. But it all started with a knife. Wow. Uh, <laughs> as crazy as that, as crazy as that sounds, as silly as that sounds, yeah. it started, it started back then. So med school's not, is that going to happen? What next year? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Go, go half a billion dollars in debt and wait 10 years with residency and all this other stuff. Now, I, now what's interesting is I've always still, I still like, I just did like 35 days of like the carnivore diet. Like yeah. I, I take health really seriously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I hang out with a bunch of dudes that are like, you know, like Ben Greenfield, these guys are like superhuman. Uh -huh. So I still love those sorts of things. I just don't need to go to med school for 10 years. No. <laughs> I, I like glean, I glean the wisdom from the people that are doing the, the research and the studies and whatever else and then go apply them versus you know, paying half a million dollars to uh, of course. start, you know, my, my medical career. So, <laughs> well, now you uh, know why we have a podcast. We can, uh, you know, <laughs> can learn all exactly. sorts of... <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Smart. It's a selfish get, thing. It. Yeah. It's, 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 uh, it's very subtle. Very, I guess it's, you know, it's a two-way street. But That's yeah. right. It is. Yeah. Uh, Three-way even with the uh, the listener too. So, yeah, there's a win-win-win across yeah. the board here. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, med school's on hold permanently. Maybe someday. But, Fair yeah. enough. <laughs> Yeah, give you the pass. So yeah. let, let, let's yeah. talk about so with, with the with the Cutco thing that you were talking about, you were giving away like these sixty dollar knives. So can you go a little deeper on that? Like how does how does that come back to you? Like how, how, like what? How does it work? Yeah, well, so so what we realized was that in business, and Seth Godin talked about this, Gary Vee talked about this. Like everybody talks about being unique or being a purple cow or giving value or standing out and being memorable. Mm -hmm. And yet in business, most people. You know, a lot of business is done by a bunch of dudes <laughs> and guys are very linear. It's like, hey, we take mm -hmm. people golfing, we take people to take dinners, we go to conferences, we give people, you know, golf balls and swag. They do the same crap over and over again. Women, on the other hand, are actually very, like, way better at giftology than guys are because they understand the little things matter, the handwritten notes, the details, the packaging, the time, all these other things. Mm -hmm. And so we started to apply. Like, I would get, I'd want to get a meeting with like a $200 million CEO of like an insurance company. And I'd invest $300 in a Cutco carving set. And the key was I would engrave on the side of this, on these blades, like the CEO's name, spouse's name, family name, mm -hmm. and packages a certain way, handwrite the note, carve out five minutes for me. I promise to be worth your time. And I'd mail it off to him. I'd mail it off to his assistant. And I'm 20 years old. And I would start to get phone calls back from these companies saying, hey, we got your package. We're blown away. Like, we want to take a meeting. And I go in into one suit I have on <laughs> and, you know, walk in and the, CEO walks in, he's like in his 60s, he's like, are you the John Ruin that sent me the knives? Like, I'm like, yeah. He's like, man, I thought you'd be like some 50 year old sales executive. Like, are you here? I'm confused. Are you here to sell me knives? I'm like, no, I'm here to help you and your thousand sales reps do exactly this to your top 10,000 relationships because everybody says they're generous. Everybody says they're a giver. Everybody says they're unique. And then they send, you know, they send out a polo shirt with a logo the size of a softball on it to a bunch of dudes making a half million dollars. You know what happens to those? All that swag and trinkets that you spent money on and invested in branding and marketing, 
don't they get know. worn once a year at best, or they get given to Goodwill, or they're you know at the bottom of the dog cage. Mm-hmm. Because <laughs> most people will do their event or their brochures or their cards or their suits at like a Ritz Carlton level, and then they're gifting their generosity. Their ways of appreciating people are done at like a Motel Six, and they don't understand that what they're like they're communicating is you don't matter. We don't walk our talk. Like we don't follow through. We're not thoughtful. And so what we realized was the knife, if it was done the right way, because it's handmade, all these other things, but the engraving, the packaging was the delivery vehicle for this emotion that would communicate to these CEOs, these executives that were clients or prospects or referral sources. Holy crap. Like, like in some cases, like I would get a meeting with like a, you know, a hundred million dollar company. I wouldn't ask for anything. I'd meet with a CEO kind of, you know, to just to learn from them. Mm -hmm. And I would send them a $500 gift afterwards and thank them for carving out the time. The CEO would say, my best, my biggest client, my biggest vendors don't send me a gift as nice as this 24 year old just sent. And they don't even handwrite the note. They send it from Amazon. And so guess who gets a, a phone call returned immediately anytime for the next 50 years? Me or my clients, because I, I walked the talk in a way that was unique and different. I included, you know, one of our core principles is the inner circle. The reason to this day, like people say, like the New York Times, that's just like, John, what's the hot new sexy gift? And I laugh them like the <laughs> stupid knives. And they're like, come on. And they're like, seriously, like, what do you send now? Like, what are your clients buying the most of? And I said, the stupid knives. And they're like, are you serious? I said, <laughs> they're like, why? And I'm like, last time I checked, most people are married. Most people have a kitchen. Most people have stucky knives that they got for their <laughs> marriage, their wedding 15 years ago. 20, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Most people uh, are foodies and they entertain. And the, hu- the hub of every house on the planet is the kitchen. Yeah, yeah. And so when I include somebody and engrave their wife's name or their husband's name and their family name and their favorite Bible verse or their mm-hmm. favorite quote on the back of these blades or whatever it is, they get it and they're like, you know what? I would never go buy this for myself, but this is awesome. And then they use it every single day for the next 10 years. That's 3,600 impressions. You want to be top of mind with somebody? Like everybody says, I want to be like trusted top of mind. I'm like, great. It's, you know, like you have a great product, you have a great service, you have a great personality, but that person's getting 30,000 messages a day. Guess what they're not thinking about is you to refer yeah. you business. Yeah. But when you get them something and their wife or their husband is raving about you every single day, guess what they can't stop thinking about? Is this stupid kid selling mm-hmm. knives or the stupid kid that, owned, that wrote a book called Giftology? So people are like, you know, how are you landing these big speaking gigs? Is, is it bureaus? I'm like, no, all my clients and all my speaking buddies refer us all of our speaking gigs. I've never booked with a bureau one time. And yet we're speaking in some cases for $85,000 for a keynote. <laughs> when it. seven years ago, I was begging to speak for free. So I don't say that's a brag. I say that because yeah. we eat on dog food. We've invested in these relationships the way that my original mentor, Paul, did 20 years ago. And so people are like, oh, I played the long game. I'm like, your long game is days. My long game is decades. Mm. And you play the long game for decades, like Paul did, like my original mentors did. That's what I was like. I got 40 years to get there. And, you know, Gary Vee's made it sexy to talk about the long game, but very few people actually put that into practice. So it started with a knife, but it's not just the knife. The, the, the item itself, people get so hung up on. And I'm like, that's only like 20% of the gift. The other 80% is all the details around it that make it land a certain way or that make it feel like flag. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that this this is, uh, yeah, like most of our businesses come through referrals. They are at least our network. You know, that's how we get folks on our podcast, the ones that, you know, we feel like we don't have an in with. Well, you know, just because of the cool stuff we've done for other people, Chris is one of those guys. He's like, Chris oh, is awesome. you gotta yeah. have John. He knows everybody. Yeah. 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 yeah, he's a good guy to <laughs> know. So, yeah. And, and you got great respect level with people too. So yeah. if he suggests something, it means something because there's a depth to the bond. It's not surface level. Right. Like that. that makes we don't second difference. guess people from a source like that. And, and I'm, nope. I'm sure you wouldn't either. Like it's kind of this weird bond. I, no, I just said, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Cause Chris, is, Cause Chris has got like, we speak a lot for EO and YPO groups in these big mm-hmm. CEO groups. And Chris is like open doors. He's like, he's just a giver. Like yeah. he's a mm-hmm. true giver. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, all of business, almost, I don't care the industry, it's all relationships, it's all referrals, it's all, even in all, with all this digital stuff, we still like, before we hire and make a huge decision, you can l- read a hundred video testimonials. What do you do? You start calling around to your network of people that you trust. Yep. And you say, Hey, are these guys legit? Will they follow through when it goes sideways, which things do? Mm-hmm. Will they follow through? Will they step up? Will they, will they take care of you? Will they fix it? Cause nobody's perfect. 
And, and so it's the behind the scenes back chatter that lands you the six figure, seven figure, eight figure deals or not. It's not the, it's great to have cool graphics and cool yeah, websites yeah. and great brochures, but at the end of the day, you got to have the people behind you. That's the foundation. That is. So yeah, you mentioned opening doors to like speaking engagements, $85,000 a pop, things like that. Obviously, uh, you, it seems like you have a good system on how to identify who to send these gifts to. And not every gift is created equal. You know, I know uh, yeah. I've gone through some of your stuff there. So chat about how you identify, I guess, the, the connectors, like that hub that can lead to all these different things in the future. Well, the simple answer is I would say most people, you know, this is a, a common cliche phrase, you know, it's paralysis by analysis. Mm -hmm. So some people will say, oh my gosh, I better only send gifts to the perfect people. <laughs> and so they, they have this spreadsheet and, and literally that spreadsheet gets doctored over the course of years and they never do anything. So my, my rule of thumb is like, if there's an opportunity to love on somebody, like I, like this year we'll, bud we budgeted, there'll probably be close to 600 grand that will invest mm -hmm. personally in gifts. Nice. I guarantee there's gifts that are going out to people that will not produce anything in the next three to five years. Mm -hmm. there's, time, like, there's times where I'm just doing it because I know it's the right thing to do, or oftentimes like a lot of my budget goes towards taking care of somebody's spouse or assistant or team. And what's interesting is some of my biggest deals have come from not the executive, not the perfect connector. It came as a direct result. Like I can think of, um, you know, I was just on Donald Miller's podcast, which mm -hmm. is Story Brand, amazing marketing mm -hmm. podcast. That's right. And, um, when I, she, the, his assistant organized a bunch of stuff for this group of like Ryan Holiday. Like there's a group of eight authors and speakers that get together for this, ma this mastermind group that we all just kind of come together to share best practices and ideas. And it's all, all our guys like John Gordon and, mm, yeah. and Donald and whatever, whatever else. So Melissa's assistant like made it super easy, just did great things. So I sent her a gift. Just say thank you for orchestrating things behind the scenes. I've never met her. Mm -hmm. I have no idea why I'm sending her gifts. Like, I don't, I, other than she was kind. Now, what was interesting is they were going to release the podcast in July. And I'm like, gosh, right after 4th of July is the worst time to have a podcast <laughs> go live. So I reached out to Melissa and said, hey, is there any way that we can push this up by three or four weeks? And she said, for you, no problem. Ah. She completely rearranged the schedule. Now, when I sent the gift, I had no need for anything from that person. I didn't give with this expectation of manipulating and getting something back. And so what I would say is that if you have the opportunity, if people are doing great things in the world and there's people around them that are doing great things in the world. Like I try to focus on givers in particular because there's a multiplication effect. Hmm. So I avoid takers, even if they're people of influence, because I'm like, I, I know they're not necessarily going to go out of their way to, to advocate and reciprocate. Um, and they're just not fun to work with. Right. You know, a lot of times they're, they're douchebags, they're idiots, they're, you know, they're, they're pain about the work with. So I'm not yeah. saying I've never given to a taker before. There have been times where we have either on accident or whatever else. But in general, I try to focus on, and I try to focus on as much as possible. Most people will go whale hunting mm -hmm. and focus externally. I take care of my employees like gold. So we do things like pay to have all of our employees get house cleaning every other week oh, wow. to have their house <laughs> clean. And, and my feeling is, is that you can't, you create bitterness if you treat your clients like the Ritz Carlton and you treat your employees like McDonald's yeah. <laughs> and you expect them to deliver Ritz Carlton service. That doesn't work. And so I, I start warm market internal customer first. So your team, hmm. and then you go to your clients, you know, your, 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 your people of influence, centers of influence, investors, mentors, advisors, cool people you meet on airplanes. Like the people that you've already have some sort of warm market relationship. Most people flip the script. They don't do anything for their employees. Their customers, they do the least that they can get away with. And then they go whale hunting and do all these amazing things for prospects hmm. and people that they just met. And I'm like, if you would just love on your clients, not because you had to, but because they're actually paying your bills right now and took care of those people, they will go be salespeople for you. They will go out of their way to um, <laughs> advocate and open doors. I'm like, you're, they're basically buying their own gift. Like you guys, like, like people are like, oh my gosh, like, why would I send somebody a gift that I already have? And I'm like, because you, like, if they go away, that's going to cost you 15 grand next year. And if you multiply that over 10 years, that's $150,000 in profit mm -hmm. that will go away for forever. Um, and so the warm market first focus and focusing on the, the inner circle, which would be spouse, kids, pets, and assistant and team. And focusing there, 80% of your dollars. And then if you want to go like whale hunting, like I met somebody on vacation uh -huh. who's director of sales for Fruit of the Loom and they own like Russell Athletic. 
I have no idea what that's going to turn into, but he was the kindest dude. We met him on the airplane. He kept giving shells every day to my girls and like <laughs> was like a hero to my daughters. I'm going to send him a gift. Heck yeah. I don't know what it's going to turn into, but it's not going to be like a $3 gift. I'm probably, it's going to be, if I took him out to a nice dinner or took him out to a nice lunch with wine or whatever else, it's going to be a two, $300 gift, nothing crazy, yeah. but it's also not going to be like an Amazon gift card for $25, which is what most people do. Hey, here's yeah. Starbucks. Go buy a coffee on me. Right. <laughs> like, like that took like, no thought. Yeah, no thought at zero all. Thought. <laughs> like just to go to the stack of cards. Like they're gonna forget about it a week from now. So like it's it's taking care of the warm market first and mm. it's going all in on a smaller number of people and it's not keeping track and keeping score because that, that also ruins it. And you, know, you guys are married. Sure. If mm-hmm. every time you do something nice for your wife, you expect something back. How does that work out? <laughs> we'll be in the doghouse all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, well, but we do that in business. Yeah. Hey, here's a gift. Hey, hey, uh, um, the kindest, you know, compliment you can give me is a referral. Like, it's the lamest thing in the world. Give a gift and then ask for something. Like, yeah, yeah. It, it feels manipulative. It doesn't feel good. And people will sometimes say thank you and maybe even give you a referral. But are they going to give you the level of referral that, that you really want? No, they're going to give you a down tier referral. They're going to refer somebody down. They're not going to refer up mm. somebody that's the best in their network because they're like, I don't want to put him or her into that circle of people if this is how they're going to play. Right. And yeah. so they don't realize what they're communicating by how even they're gifting. Like that communicates what level of player you are. Um, cause if you gift like a king, you get treated like a king. Mm. If you gift like a manipulator and a douchebag, guess what? You get put into a different <laughs> category. So you put out into the world. world. Yeah. That's what you put into the world. And, and it's, I mean, it's sad. And, and I've, you know, I've done that before early in my career. Like I've done gifts for, it was a manipulation hmm. and, and I'm not saying we're perfect now, but, but I think the intention behind the gift and the way you position it matters on, on how it's going to bear fruit over the years, but, you know, into, into the future. So I'm, I'm really curious because, uh, first of all, I want to shout out, uh, giftology system.com for you because that is like a full blown baller system and spreadsheet form with like, I don't know, eight tabs along top. <laughs> and it's like a whole freaking system for doing exactly this. But yeah. John, uh, yeah, well, yeah. really quick, I wanted to just highlight the fruit of the loom guy that you met on your trip. Like, so like, I know there's a full process to this and I don't want you to go through every little detail, but like, what's your thought pattern into like, how are you going to approach this? Like, what gift are you going to send them? What's the mindset there with uh, this new connection of yours? Yeah, well, here, here's the interesting thing is people... Well, I, I could send the same, like to this day, like 80% of our budget will be knives. And people are like, really? The knives? Why the knives? I'm like, well, because I, I want something that's applicable to every single human. Like, I, I, like when I don't know somebody intimately well, like we have some crazy gifts. Like we have these $1,000 mugs and $2,500 bases that tell somebody's whole life story. They're called artifactmugs.com. You can go wow. check them out. Um, I love them. They're amazing. But guess what? Like if you start and give stuff, you know, it's like starting at the Super Bowl, like, you, you you start at the pinnacle. You almost make people feel uncomfortable. Like you can get, <laughs> you can overcompensate with something with a new relationship. It's like basically meeting somebody on the first date and saying, "Hey, do you, you want to have ten kids with me and get married tomorrow?" <laughs> True. Like that doesn't like. And so, but there's there's also the other level, which is like automating something and just sending like some swag, which is what people do with their book launches, and they just make me gag. Like, hey, here's a bunch of stuff with my logo on it. Like. Mm-hmm to inspire you to want to go talk about my book or my course or my whatever. It's like, oh, that's not a gift. Like that's a, that's, it's trinkets. It's, it's promotional swag. material. It's promotional <laughs> yeah. It's not a gift. It's all about you, not about the recipient. So, so in this case, we'll send two or three knives. Well, I, I'll look up and find out. I didn't meet his wife. I did meet his daughter who mm-hmm. um, was sweetheart. She was playing with our girls and like, she's getting ready to be a, a teacher, a kindergarten teacher. Uh, for the first year this year in, in Kentucky. Oh, wow. So I'll, I'll, I'll send a few knives. I'll personalize with his name. Um, he, I don't know if he's a person of faith, but he, I just got that feeling that mm-hmm. he was like just his like demeanor and spirit about him. Um, so I'll do a little research or my team will and, and focusing on the who is more important than the what. Like once again, in Western culture, anything you're going to send somebody, they can go buy for themselves. Like right. if they're an affluent person. Mm-hmm. So if you don't focus on the person and realize most people are married, so I'm going to get his wife's name, family name, something that's important, maybe an important quote or whatever else. He works for Fruit of the Loom, which is owned by Berkshire Hathaway. Like mm-hmm. we're going to get this picture. The handwritten note is going to be just as valuable as the item because he can go buy his own knives. Yep. But because they're engraved a certain way uh, with the family name, now they go from like everybody, like even like Roland Frazier from Trafficking yep. Diversion Digital Marketer. Um, 
you know, we went and spoke for his war room group and he, and you could tell like, he was like, John, like the nice thing, like who cares? Like, I like wine. I give yeah. everybody wine. You know, like if yeah, I love yeah. somebody, I send them a $500, or $1,000 bottle of wine. That's my thing. Well, afterwards we sent him like the five, me and Pete Vargas sent him a $5,000 nice stuff. And he opened it on Facebook Live with his wife, who's never in the I video. saw that. And, he's, uh, like, yeah. and he's like, and now I get it. Because all, all 32 knives, each side was engraved with a quote of wisdom that he had spoken on a stage somewhere in the last 30 years. That's so cool. So now all of a sudden, this is, these knives are now an artifact that will, his kids will someday fight over who gets the knives. Not because of the knives. It's because of all the memories that were created with the knives. And then what's engraved into them makes them personal to their family. Hmm. And that's what creates the essence of something that's worth keeping something that's worth like saving in a fire because of the meaning behind it not the item yeah so so in this case with with greg the guy from from fruit of the loom i'll send him a few knives that he's going to use every day with his family for the next 30 years but because the engraving the handwritten notes that will go with it that will honor the fact that hey thanks for carl's time to pour to my girls and make them feel special and you know like every day he was like hey teach them about different shells i had no idea what wow. the these shells were yeah. and uh and so now all of a sudden Instead of having to fly to Kentucky and rent a car and go airplane and waste time away from my family, I can, I can hit somebody in another city with a little bit of thought and with two, three hundred dollars, you know, two, three hundred dollars doesn't even buy your plane ticket. It doesn't even pay for your rental car and your dinner and all these other things that everybody else does. Now there's a, there's a tangible reminder of this great experience that we had together in Florida. That he's now telling stories in his circle of people that he's running with, with Walmart and all, Berkshire Hathaway and all these other places. And so that's where the ripple effect starts to take place. So people will focus on the what, like the knives, who cares? Hmm. All of the other little things that we coordinate. And that's where people are like, John, gifting's not that hard. I'm like, yeah, it's not hard if you do it for one person. Yeah, I, anybody could do what we do for their spouse or for their biggest client. It's, if you want to take and do what I'm talking about, and you want to multiply that times 10 or times 100 or times 10,000, that's where people start cutting corners like, oh, I can't handwrite that many notes. Right. Oh, <laughs> I can't engrave that many engravings. Oh, I, I can't reship and reship and reship that many things. Oh, I don't want to gift wrap that. Oh, yeah. I don't want like, and so they start saying, you know what, let's just send out a bunch of swag, a bunch of, you know, Bose headphones or a bunch of whatever, <laughs> because it's the personalization at scale. Yeah. That, start, that that really drowns people and so they end up either doing nothing or they do it halfway and then like they, then they come back to me like gifology doesn't work and i'm like you didn't follow the recipe dude <laughs> like if you don't follow the recipe that's like baking bread if you don't put yeast in bread guess what you don't get you don't get yeast, you don't get bread right. and, if, and if you don't follow the little details of gifology don't expect your relationships to flourish and for referrals to fall from the sky like that's not how it works this is a recipe that takes years to develop this isn't like a one and done like check the box type thing yeah now i have a question so if somebody was just starting like a, a brand new business they're just kind of like fresh into to, to building something new and maybe they're a little more concerned about budget they're like really watching where every penny is going because they're, yeah. they're so new they don't know what they're doing yet you know what what sort of advice would you give those people it, 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 honestly the advice is the same mm -hmm. um it, now the zeros are different and so let's just say you're a small company and, and last year, you know, you eked out a $40,000 profit paying yourself. Like that's all you could, mm -hmm. you know, that's what, you know, owners take in, you know, it was 40 grand. You still made 40 grand. Mm -hmm. Now let's say, and like we say it should be a reinvestment of profit back into relationships. So I say five to 15% of net profit should be reinvested back into your warm market, employees, clients, partners, investors, mentors. And so 40 grand, you know, five to 15%, let's hit in the middle to so 10%. Of 40 grand, that means four grand that you have to invest. Now it's a lot because it's out of 40 grand. It's like, dang, now I'm down to 36. Yeah. But if you do it the right way, you keep those clients in relationships, you grow those clients in relationships. And the secret sauce is where they, people start becoming your own personal sales force and going out of their way to advocate. And so what I would say is, you're, I have college kids that reach out and say, John, what should I do? And I'm like, instead of buying beer and stupid stuff and like, <laughs> you know, buying drinks at the club, you know, and take a thousand dollars, you know, like you can scrape together a thousand dollars over the course of a year. Right. And take that thousand dollars and don't go buy stupid, you know, like, you know, stress balls and, you mm -hmm. know, magnets and such, such. Take that thousand and invest it into your four most important relationships. Mm -hmm. And that's $250. Same cost as if you took somebody out to a nice dinner or whatever else. Like people say they don't have money to invest, but, but if you look at their P&L, they're investing it somewhere. Mm -hmm. It might be Facebook ads. It might be, you know, 
parties. It might be sponsoring things. It's got to it be, be something. Yeah, there's a leaky bucket yeah, there, somewhere. <laughs> there's a leaky bucket somewhere. And, or there's money that they're spending that isn't getting the ROI that they want. So when I, when mm. I tell people like, you know, look at your cost per impression, look at your return on relationship. You know, everybody measures ROI and all these different things. I'm like, you know, I've seen people get 10,000, 100,000 percent RO, you know, ROR over time. And so I'd say take a thousand bucks and go all in on four people. Make sure you go all in on the handwritten notes. You know, you don't have to outsource any of it. You can do it all yourself. You can do the research like people like through conversations and social media and building a relationship with their, their assistant or somebody else. You can get the data to make the gift crazy personal. Yeah. And what I would say is, you know, don't go buy somebody that ro- wears a Rolex or a Breitling, a, you know, $250 watch. <laughs> you think it's awesome. It's a Seiko and whatever else. You know, it's like go best in class in a category. Like I would rather send somebody a hundred dollar luggage tag than a five hundred dollar watch. Right. Most executives. And the reason is, is a hundred dollar luggage tag is probably the nicest luggage tag anybody's ever seen. Mm-hmm. It's made out of leather and like some great crazy leather shop. It's brass. It's got the family name. It's something that it's it's a piece that people put on their Tumi bag or the Rimwa or whatever their luggage is. They'll keep that for the next twenty years. Mm-hmm. Whereas a five hundred dollar watch, like it's it's going to be gone. It's it's not going to wow somebody. You know, and they may say thank you out of gift guilt, like feeling mm-hmm. of like, oh, I better say because people want to be polite. But nobody is like taking your Seiko watch and be like, oh my gosh, like I'm going to pass this down to future generations. <laughs> no, it'll be a re gift probably, and yeah, probably, probably a be, silent gift. Yeah, <laughs> in yeah. their circle. <laughs> yeah, it's going to go to the goodwill or the whatever. But if you can go into a category that most people think doesn't matter, and that's why the knives work. Most people yeah. like you go buy a, a knife set at Target for twenty bucks, and we send somebody one knife that costs two hundred. That like melts their face off, even an affluent person, based upon how it's personalized or whatever else. So even somebody that's starting up, find those people that are you know those mentors, maybe even a professor, mm-hmm. like like those people that are running with other people of influence and. And that you need their wisdom and you need their connections or you need their endorsement or whatever else. Like people, I don't care how young you are, how small your business is, like you still need to build the foundations of your relationship and go out of your way to show gratitude. And it's not outspending other people. Like mm-hmm. somebody else might spend $2,500 on that person. You'll spend $250 or $100. But based upon the thoughtfulness and the strategy behind it, you can actually have 100 times more impact than somebody that can outspend you. So it's not a, I, I bootstrap this business. I don't have any outside investors. Mm-hmm. I have one business partner about half the company 12, 13 years ago. So I understand what it feels like to say, I'm going against somebody that is a billion dollar company. I'm never going to outspend them, but I can out, I can out be more thoughtful than they can be yeah. by That's taking the time, energy and effort to do it. That's a ton, hundred percent it. it. You don't need to have the money for it. It's out thinking them. It's out. Out uh, gratituding them with action. I know that was something that you said earlier. Is like personalizing too everything. Yeah, yeah. And it's like yeah. this. It's not a feeling like you were saying. It's this action that like yeah. There's a lot of talk about. Oh, I'm so grateful for this connection or for you or for whatever this opportunity. It's like show it. Service. Yeah, it drives me bonkers. Like oh, I'm so grateful. <laughs> hey, great. That's awesome. It, it, grat- Gratitude is super important. Like I love the guys. I know the guys that wrote the you know the five minute journal. Right. I passed out. I recommended the five minutes journal. You like you write every day who you're grateful for. Yep. Mm-hmm. And they're half in that equation is gratitude. Like you said, gratitude is an action. It's a take in whether it's a phone call, whether it's a handwritten note, whether it's a video, you know, gifting a tangible gift is a way of putting your thoughts. You know, it's like really at the end of the day, like you look throughout history, like even 5,000 years ago, kings would give other kings like 10,000 head of cattle. Why? Mm. Because the gift showed you how much value you placed on the relationship. Right. And and that transcends to why do we still in 2020, why do girls still want like a huge rock? <laughs> Part of it is they want to be valued. It's, it's they want to they want they want to be able to show the world that they, that their significant other values them enough to invest this much into this, you know, stupid little shiny, you know, sparkly little rock. Mm-hmm. We all want to be valued. We all want to feel like our lives matter. And yet most people in our transact, like everybody says they're in the relationship business, but most people in, in Western culture are transactional. You do this, mm-hmm. you know, you give me a referral, here's your gift. Yeah. That's not relationship. That's tit for tat. That's trans, that you just turn that relationship into a transactional relationship and you didn't even realize. You thought you were doing something good, but somebody sends you a half million dollar piece of business and you send them a $500 bottle of wine. You just devalue the referral. You just mm-hmm. devalue the relationship. And so 
there's so much that's being communicated subconsciously and and psychologically by how we show up. I mean, Robert Cialdini has made a career on talking about influence right. for mm-hmm. what 30, 40 years. You know, yeah. the guy who wrote Influence and Persuasion yep. talked about the power of how to build reciprocity the right way and the wrong way and how to do it. And like, this is like, this isn't like woo woo stuff. Like this is based in like, it's science, PhD, man. Like yeah. science, man. This is how, you know, whether you believe in a God or not, like this is uh-huh. like how human beings are wired. This is in our DNA. And yet, like if you go to most, even MBA programs, you'll never see a gifting class. You'll never see like a giftology class. It, it, but we're starting to speak and teach at some of these universities because good. people are realizing like there's power in this. And you can use it for good or evil. You can use it the wrong way or the right way. Uh, but there, it's definitely based in science and it definitely matters. Yeah. Well, I was going to ask you, how do you wow your wife now? Because she probably knows all your tricks. You know? <laughs> it's like, what's Dude, the secret, hand, man? <laughs> hands down, the hardest, most difficult. Like I've been married in September. Uh-huh. It'll be 11 years. We have four kids. Nice. And I will tell you that my wife, first off, she's like, she's a farm girl, but like she's super classy. She's super like aware of details. And for the first couple of years of marriage, I, st- I didn't have anything left in the gas tank. I was the worst gift giver for my wife. And it's not a great way to be the giftology guy and then show up as this lame, like B level, junior varsity level gifter at home. Yeah. Um, but, th- but you're right. She knows all my tricks, but the same principles apply. Like I have to think about it year round. I have to do it not because it's an anniversary, birthday or Christmas. That's the worst time to send gifts in business. It's the right. worst time to send gifts to your wife. Like those are table stakes. Those don't get you brownie points. And you have to be thoughtful. You have to think about it, you know, months and even years in advance. You have to plan it out. You have to put just as much effort into loving on your wife as you do your fantasy football league or whatever your <laughs> hobby is. Like people are like, I remember guys coming up to me like, dude, hey, I need help with my 50th anniversary gift. It's like next month. I'm like, dude, you're screwed. <laughs> like, like, yep. like, I can't help you with that. Like, you should have been listening for the last five years. Like, are you kidding me? Like, yeah. dude, I, I, I cannot save, I cannot save this gifting experience for you. Like, it needs to be proactive. It needs to be. And so, for my wife, like, you know, I'm thinking about things years in advance. And sometimes I hit a home run, and my wife will tell you, like, sometimes John is just amazing. Hmm. And there's other times, man, I think I'm like getting a freaking throw the fastball, and she just crushes me. So like, <laughs> like, like, she just like lays me out and says, like, John, really? Like, this is like, she's, still, she's honest with me. She doesn't pull any punches. Oh, yeah. Wow. Well, um, she? She's making you better no, anyway. It sounds no, like... no question. She makes me, yeah, yeah. She's like, she's like the, the litmus test and the barometer <laughs> on things. Like, if it passes her bar, like it's good. Yeah. If it doesn't, then I'm questioning whether or not it's a good idea or not. Sure. <laughs> yeah, man, that makes sense. Oh, that's that's uh, yeah. You actually had a really good answer for that. <laughs> I was like, damn, man, I was just super curious about that. And, yeah. And something else that popped up is frequency of gifting. So there's obviously, you know, like there's the initial touch, there's the thank you type of gift as well. But like, yeah. wh- what would you say about the consistency of gifts, or uh, would you say not to for certain situations? Well, I think that most, a lot of times people will treat this like the shiny object, like we all entrepreneurs do. We all find this new idea and we're like, oh, we're going to do this. And we get all gung ho and for three months we do it. And then mm-hmm. we go back to our habits or we switch to the next shiny object. Yep. And what's interesting about giftology is you go do this. This isn't like, this isn't a tactical thing. This needs to be like one of the guys who's a client of ours. Um, we just spoke for his masterclass recently. Uh, Michael Mogo, one of the largest marketing mm-hmm. companies. All he does is law firms. Mm-hmm. And he he's given away in like the last three years like nine Teslas and a Ferrari to his <laughs> client. Oh, like wow. those are some of the gifts he gives. And uh, and so I said, Michael, you're a great example of consistency. Most people will give away this crazy gift to all their clients or their employees, and then they go back to it's cricket. So they mm-hmm. like hit them with this lo- atomic love bomb, and then it's nothing. And basically, what it looks like is like, hey, I'm all of a sudden I'm radically generous, and then I go back to being Ebony the street. <laughs> that doesn't like it almost is worse than than you know doing nothing at all and so consistency same with your you know your like your your wife yeah. you know everybody wants to see like is this like a one-time thing or is this who you really are as a company as a leader as a husband as a father like consistency is key to show up repeatedly now there is a a, a point where you can take it too far and, you know, if you start sending your wife flowers every single week on autopilot, all of a sudden it starts to feel like either it doesn't feel the same way as if you, what we call planned randomness. So to me, no more than four times a year if it's a warm relationship. So once a quarter, they never know what's coming when, 
And so you can lay out a plan. Sometimes we have some clients that we lay out a 10 year plan for them of what's going to go out and this is proactive. Yeah. That's 80% of their budget. The other 20% of their budget is teaching their team, their sales team, their marketing team to listen for what I call the crazy one off. That's when you find out like somebody has double knee surgery and they're stuck in bed and you want to send out, you know, package. You find out somebody's kid gets into Harvard. Those are one off situations that can't be planned for that you need to budget for and you need to be able to do something crazy and over the top and really wow them during those times. But that's like those cycles like that. You might hit one person one year and not hit them with a crazy one off for another few years. And so having a, a 80% of your proactive budget, you know, set up to where it, you know what's going out when and how, and that's how like we do it with the nice stuff all the time. Yeah. We'll take a $5,000 nice stuff. Most people don't want to drop five grand on one gift, <laughs> but they'll say, we'll break it into 250 or $500 chunk. And we'll build that set over the course of months or years. Oh, that's cool. And, and we drip on them and we do the same thing more frequently if they're a prospect. Now, like, like Jeffrey Gittimer, I want to get his attention. He's a big sales author. Maybe you read the Little Red Book of Sales. Like he yeah. sold more sales books than anybody in the last 50 years. He's like in the 70s. The dude's just like this crotchety, <laughs> aggressive. Like he's, he's like a buddy of mine, but he's like yeah. you know, from Jersey. And he's yeah. like just That's cool. <laughs> and, and so I, I, um, when I first met him like 14 years ago, I sent him an empty knife block and I sent him a gift a month for 18 straight months. I built him four or 5,000 on ice set over 18 months repeatedly, just carve out time, cutting edge sales, like anything I could <laughs> build into this. And, and, and so the frequency when you're going after whale prospects needs to be dialed up to hit them repeatedly. Whereas on the warm market, you can spend way less money and still be effective and lay mm -hmm. out that planned randomness. And so you still avoid the anniversaries, birthdays, Christmas. You're just picking times. You're sending the gifts to them, not because the deal is closed, not because it's renewal time. You're sending it to them just because. And so that's the frequency. That's where people get it wrong. They either do too little or they do a whole bunch and then they go, they, they, you know, the wells dry. And so having that frequency dialed in year over year is where people are like, John, like, you're still sending me stuff and I haven't sent you any referrals or any deals. Like, why are you still sending me things? I'm like, because I appreciate the relationship. Yeah, yeah. Dude, you're crazy. Yeah. And, but, but, but subconsciously they're thinking, I got to, you know, like if they're a giver, guess what they want to do? They're top of mind. They're, they want to go advocate for you. Not because you put pressure on them or manipulated, just because of how you're showing up consistently. Now, it doesn't mean you can have a sucky service or business and give great gifts and all of a sudden, like everything's great. Like you have to have a great business for business. The gifts are just that little like cherry on top of the Sunday that's like people love it and they'll, they'll, they'll rave about it, but you still have to have the rest of the Sunday in order for the business to work. Yeah. That makes sense? Yeah, yeah, no, it does. And I'm just thinking of like the gifts that people have sent me over the years. And one of them actually was Katie Kremitzos, uh, Chris's wife. It was after yeah. I helped her out with some podcast stuff. She sent me a freaking custom canvas of my wife and my baby, like one of the first pictures we ever took. And she just uh, sent it to us. And I'm, it just came back to me. I was like, Haha, yeah, because every time I look at that, I think of them. I think of her. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. It yeah, works, you, man. It's the heartstrings, man. See, totally. I'm telling you, women are their emotional intelligence is a thousand percent higher mm. than guys are like you know what's the line item what's the budget check the box get my logo as big as possible like <laughs> they do everything everything is anti-giftology yeah. everything that we teach is, is goes against the testosterone driven dude that's like oh hit him harder Put, send it more like mm -hmm. you know like automate it like you know efficiency it's like dude relationships aren't efficient sometimes like, like sometimes like going the extra mile for people in the short term looks like a stupid, like waste of time and energy and resources. Like women are like, you know, it's like when, when they, when I, I talked about before, like, you know, they, they take the time, not every, every woman, I'm, I'm generalizing, but in general, women's intuition, their, their right. emotional intelligence of like the handwritten notes, the penmanship, the packaging, the little things. Like my wife will get something and be like, did you notice? the way the box folded together. And I'm like, Nope. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. But she did. Uh -huh. and, and that caught her attention. And that, and that becomes oftentimes those little things become it's like when you go to a, a restaurant and everything's amazing. But you go to the bathroom and the bathroom is a mess. Mm -hmm. Like that one little detail can completely change your perception of that entire establishment or an you know, amazing company product. And you call the customer service rep and the customer service rep is a douchebag. It completely, that one little interaction can change how you feel about a brand, a company, 
you know, in a, a service, a product, whatever else. And so like those little things like that are so like, you know, Katie obviously got it. Like to be able yeah. to hit the heartstrings of you and, you know, like your first, oh, yeah. you know, your first born and, yeah. I mean, and dude, it's right I mean, above her like, changing table, perfect. so I see it daily. So it's like I put yeah. it front and center. I know that's part she's of the a, whole thing. She's a, she's a giftologist, man. She's, I know she is. <laughs> she's a giftologist. That's awesome. It's so cool. So when it when it comes to like like getting people's contact details to actually send them the gift, are you sort of like building relationships first? You know, getting to a point where you can ask for the address, or are you kind of going out and sort of prospecting for addresses so you can send gifts to some of the people you want to get in front of? Yeah, so if it's on the prospecting side, um, yeah, I mean, you're, you're kind of behind the scenes, you're, you're talking to other mutual relationships. Mm-hmm. One of the reasons that like we, we send the same level of gift to the assistant we do the CEO is we want to build a relationship with the assistant who might be able to get us an address. Um, you know, it's not a manipulation, but it is like there are benefits to building relationships with the people around them, not just the, mm-hmm. the core executive. Um, but what I'll say is if, if it's a warm relationship, you should have that address, right. whether it's home or business address. Uh, and if you don't, you, know, you can reach out to somebody and say, "Hey, you know, I, I you know, I want to send you a book, or I want to send you." A, and you set the expectations like super low. <laughs> so you don't say, "Hey, I want to like the amount of people that, say, that reach out to their clients and say, "Hey, what's your address or what's your home address?" Now all of a sudden, their expectation of like, "Oh, he's going to send me something or she's going to send me something," and they're thinking, "Ah, it's going to be swag," or they're thinking, "Gosh, I hope it's an Apple Watch or I hope it's a whatever." <laughs> and so their expectations are like up here, and then you like. You know, like send them like a you know a jump drive with your <laughs> logo on it, and and like it's like such a disappointment. Whereas if like even a sucky gift shows up out of the blue that they're not expecting, will exceed expectations. Whereas if you let somebody know, hey, I'm going to send you something. Now all of a sudden you ruin ha- literally half of the impact of the gift, which is the prize element. Yeah. And people are like, oh, I'll just let them pick out their own gift. I'm like, are you serious? You think like you do give your wife a catalog? And say, hey, here's the American Express catalog. Go pick out your anniversary gift. <laughs> no, like that's the, the most unthoughtful, unromantic thing on the planet. But people do that in business and they call that, well, like they, they can choose their own gift. I'm like, that's not, that's not a gift. <laughs> that might be an incentive. That might be a, a reward, but that's not a gift. A gift is knowing the person or being thoughtful enough to be able to send something out to them as a surprise, as a just because, so that it makes that deep emotional connection. Otherwise, you're just doing the, you know, the Amex rewards thing. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like that does create a little bit of, of basic loyalty, but it doesn't get what I call active loyalty where somebody's like, holy crap, I will run through walls for this guy, for this gal. Like mm-hmm. that happens because you've connected to them at that emotional heart level, which is, you know, the painting of you and your kid that sits over your changing table. Mm-hmm. Like that's going to get you active loyalty. That is going to get you engaged at a level where you're like, you know what? Katie could ask me to fly to Tampa tomorrow yeah. to help with X, Y, and Z. And you're like, I'm probably going to jump on the plane and do it. I'm going to heavily consider uh, it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to heavily consider yeah. it because of the depth of the relationship. That's right. Yeah. And for example, Katie Kermitos emailed me to get Joe's address. So That's she didn't go point. to Joe to get the address. See, she's a freaking <laughs> ethologist. <laughs> there it is. That, that, that's, that's, that's an extra step. It's a hassle. And mm. people are like, oh, I'll just shoot him a text. And I'm like, you're an idiot. You're mm. ruining it. Mm. You're ruining it. Yeah. Like email back and say, hey, by the way, I'm sending you a book. Take the expectations way low and then blast them with something amazing. Don't like let them like wonder, are they send me Harry and David basket? Are they send me my favorite bottle of wine? You know, like <laughs> even like, even sucky consumable gifts are way better as a surprise than as an ex- expectation or obligation, which is when, you know, most people are like, hey, who's close the deal? Or hey, here's your birthday. Or hey, it's our anniversary. Here's your gift. It's like, yeah, come on, I guys. Like, <laughs> lame. So lame. if you are going to ask for the address, do it in a way that sets the expectation super low so that you... Super uh, low. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So like, hey, can I get your address? I want to send you a copy of our latest book, right? They're expecting a book and then they get a painting in the mail. Yeah, they're like, that's <laughs> yeah. cool, but... Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah you can still send the book, yeah. but, like, but, but when, when you set the ex- expectations, they're everything, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, if you go to, you know, it's like if you go to, um, it's like going to uh, the Ritz and you get Motel 6 level service, you right. get Motel 6 and you get Ritz level, like, if you flip the expectations, all of a sudden the same experience. It's like if you, you know, if you go to Kia and you get like Mercedes level service, you're like, holy crap. But if you go to Mercedes and just get Mercedes level service, you're like, I take that for granted because that's what I'm expecting. That's right. That's why yeah. I, I, like that, that's the, that's the bar. And so the more you can set the bar 
And that's why I tell people like, why, why does gifting work so well? You know, doing it this way. And I'm like, well, because people think they're a seven out of 10 on gifting and really they're a negative three. <laughs> the expectations are stupid low. Yeah. And so when you get really good at it and you're just like a four out of 10 versus, you know, Facebook ads and speaking and conferences and all these other things, like there's so much competition and so much noise. It's like the red ocean, blue ocean concept. Like right. I want to play in the blue ocean. Mm-hmm. where everybody else like there's no there is no competition versus going and competing and you might be world class but if you're 10 other people that are world class at that same level and there's nothing different about what you're doing then you're fighting over scraps with other people that are probably have a bigger budget bigger resources than what you have and so if, that's why like i love the david and goliath i love helping you know the little guy like we have big yeah. clients but even like our big clients might be you know, whether they're half a million or some of them are like $500 million companies with like, oh my gosh, that's the Goliath. I'm like, no, but they're going up against a $25 billion company. Right. So yeah. the $500 million company is actually small yeah. in comparison to their competitors. And so they're looking to say, hey, how can I spend, you know, this amount of money, which to them is a lot, these guys is little, it could be different, to be unique, to invest in these relationships differently. So everybody's perspective is different. But at the end of the day, it's still the same thing as expectations being matter exceeded. Right. Drastically impact how somebody receives something. And we're all just humans at the end of the day. It doesn't matter what kind of size company you're living in or where you live or who you are. Yeah, it's just freaking go for it. And the smaller company, I feel like, is a little bit more ninja and can apply oh, yeah. these things. And uh, talk about really quick, because I kind of cut you off earlier when I mentioned systemology. Uh, what was it? Um, or, sorry, not systemology. <laughs> giftology. Systemology is a book that I'm reading. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's by that, by that domain. It's a cool yeah. book, though, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Giftologysystem.com. I was combining both. Um, talk yeah. about that spreadsheet really quick, and then obviously the book, too. So I think it's a killer resource. Yeah, I mean, Giftology System, it, it was our resource. It, it's literally what we charge thousands of dollars when clients hire us to put together. Like, everybody has, or most businesses, even small businesses, like, have a financial plan, an operations plan, a marketing plan. I always ask people, what's your relationship plan? And they, I don't care what size company it is, whether they have one employee or a thousand, they're like, what do you mean relationship plan? <laughs> like, you know, like if your business rises and falls on relationships, what's your plan to appreciate and show value to your most important relationship? I'm like, we don't have a plan for that. We just kind of like, we have a customer experience. I'm like, no, like, what's your relationship plan? How are you going to love on these people? Hmm. And so the, like that plan is what, if you go download it for free, our, like what we took 20 years to kind of figure out is the recipe. Who are you investing in? What's the most important time? Like how much should you be in investing, reinvesting back into these relationships? How frequently should you send the gift? You know, what types of items would be ideal to send out? And, and what was the plan going to be for 12 months or 24 months or 36 months? So our entire recipe, literally like what it took, you know, two decades to figure out is there for somebody to go steal and go do. And people are like, why do you offer that for free? And I'm like, well, if you want to do it for one or two people, no problem. If, if somebody wants to go do it and thinks that they're going to do it on their own for, you know, 20 or 200 or 2000 people, oftentimes when people do that, they realize, holy crap, that's a lot of handwritten. Mm. That's a lot of reshipping and repackaging and gift wrapping and all of these other things. And so oftentimes they'll come hire our agency, even if they're a small company, because we don't really charge that much more to execute the whole program for them. Mm. And so giftology system is our playbook. It's our playbook of how to build a relationship plan. And how to do it, whether you're a small company or a Fortune 100 company, and it's all there for the uh, for the taking. The book itself goes into a little bit more of the, the philosophy behind it. It gives some case studies and stories. Um, and so the book, you know, once again, there's not a giftology, you know, two coming out anytime soon. We wrote the book literally in 2016, and it's more popular today than it was then because it just keeps gaining momentum because every like we basically said when we came out with the book, we're going to eat our own dog food. We're going to treat this like a five-year launch. And so like we're four years into a five-year launch plan Nice. before we write the next book or you know do the next thing. Like I'm not a big... I know a lot of authors make most of their money off of speaking. We make most of our money off of the actual agency side. Mm-hmm. And so I don't need to write a book every year. Like I'll write a book every five years at most. Right. Um, but uh, but the giftology system is our is our playbook. And then the tangible form with a little bit more detail is uh, a giftology book, which you can get, you know, Amazon or really any other place that uh, that, that sells books. 
Super Very cool. cool. Now I'm curious a little bit about your, your actual agency business model. Like we don't have to stick here for too long, but I'm curious, like how do you as an agency manage to do this at scale for people? Like how, how do you know what kind of the ideal gifts are and how do you do so many handwritten notes? I'm, I'm kind of curious how that, that piece of the operation works. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it, it's really simple. I mean, we have, um, you know, our top 10 vendors that we work with. Like I can take that thousand dollar mug that I was talking about before mm-hmm. that tells somebody's whole life story. I could send that to 10,000 people and 9,000, you know, 9,999 of them are going to be like crying when they mm-hmm. get it. Why? Because it's personal to them. It's their faith, their family, their who believed in them first, who mentored them first. You know, what's their, what's the relationship with their kids like? What's their, you know, what's their biggest failure, their biggest success? What are they, what's their legacy? Mm-hmm. So the clay itself is worth like $10 and 14 cents. Mm-hmm. The other $990 in value is the artist takes four weeks to create this beautiful work of art and then describes talking about why it's so important and why their life matters, whatever else. And so um, the item, we, we know kind of plug and play. Like most people drink coffee or tea, mm-hmm. but they're going to use a mug. Most mm-hmm. people have a $3 mug that they drink their coffee or tea out of that's from China, you know, that has some logo or some silly saying on it. And we give them one that like, is ba- it's like winning the Oscars. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's like this legacy play that's like nobody can touch. Um, the knives, once again, we can plug and play those, whether it's one knife or a full set. I mean, Cutco's full kitchen yeah. is like 12 grand. I can build out a program for years with that. So, so the what is very easy. Mm-hmm. It's the, the identifying, walking people through, you know, what we, we basically charge a couple grand to put together the plan and then they can go do the plan on their own. So literally like for a couple grand, a solopreneur or a fortune 500 company, it has access to a, a simple plan of what we're going to do over the next 12 months of, you know, who are we going to target? What's the investment going to be? What's the theme of the notes going to be? All that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And then most 99% of the time, they come back and say, we want you to execute it. So we charge an execution fee, mm-hmm. kind of a management fee, mm-hmm. you know, that's upwards anywhere from a couple grand up to 10 grand to manage the process. And then we charge the gifts. So if you want to go buy a $200 knife, like we're going to charge you $200 plus the management fee. Gotcha. And so, so it allows for people to, once they get us the data, like we have teams of people on site at Cutco and our different vendors that handwrite all the notes for us, mm-hmm. that they, that they have dedicated, we have dedicated staff there that allows for us to not have to ship to multiple fulfillment centers, whatever else. Mm. And it, so it creates efficiency and scale. And so Cutco loves it because we're shipping millions <laughs> of dollars of product yeah. and they have engraving capability on site. They have all these different things. And so. The agency side, really, we're getting paid to manage the chaos and the logistics and the strategy up front of, well, I, I'm not, you know, my handwriting stuff, or um, I don't want to write that many notes, or um, I don't know what to say in the note. Like, how do I tie this in so it doesn't feel cheesy? Right. Or like all of those questions, we walk through and handle all those, all those little like hurdles and then map it out. And then like the, the people who are receiving the gifts, like, man, so mad, freaking thoughtful. Like, how do they find the time to send these gifts with these notes and mm. these engravings and all this other stuff? And so we're like the Wizard of Oz behind the scenes. It's not branded as giftology. It's, it's branded as one human sending another human a gift. Right. And we're just kind of behind the curtain making all that happen, uh, which to me is like, it's huge because if it feels like it came from a gifting company, then yeah. it feels like you outsource it. It ruins part of the impact. So. Right. So that's the agency. People are like, why doesn't everybody know about giftology? I'm like, well, they know about the book. They know about the service. But they really don't know who our clients are unless the client goes out of their way to say, hey, you know, like Chris will sometimes connect mm-hmm. with somebody or whatever else or, you know, because people are like, hey, here's, this is my secret weapon <laughs> right, to, right. to do this. Uh, but we're, the goal for us is to stay in the backdrop and, uh, and handle things behind the scenes. Totally I think that's an awesome model, man. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, it's it's better to be the Wizard of Oz in the background anyway. So, <laughs> <laughs> it really is. Yeah, it's yeah it really is. Yeah. Yep. Well, cool, man. Uh, let, let's wrap this up. I know you got to get back to your family, man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, wrap it up one more time with us. Uh, so we have giftologysystem.com. Get the book, Giftology, uh, Amazon and everywhere else. What's another book or something you just find yourself going to pretty often that you recommend maybe people on your team or even clients? I mean, I, I'm an avid reader. I, I, mean, I, I think yeah. the people that you hang out with and, you know, the books that you read was that Tr- Charlie Tremendous Jones, like, mm. tell me the books you read and the, and the people you hang out with, that's who you're going to become. Yep. Um, I mean, Give and Take was a huge one for me. Um, with Adam Grant's book talked about, you know, Give or Take or Snatchers. Like, that book yeah. is fantastic. Joey Coleman's book, um, Never Lose a Customer. 
um, um, is massive. He's a he's a huge he's a client. He's navigating one of the top ten speakers I've ever seen speak. Um, but his methodology of how to engage people in the first hundred days of onboarding a client, he works with like Zappos and like huge mm-hmm. companies. And, and he's a lawyer, so he has like this analytical mind of like super detailed. And then he's like one of the most creative human beings on the planet. So he's very creative, very animated. Um, his book is fantastic. Nice. Um, you know, right now, uh, you know, rereading um, oh, yeah. uh, uh, Story Brand, which Donald Miller's book is, you know, like is this his mindset of marketing made simple and how to think through like, you know, you don't make yourself the hero. It's like, what makes the client the hero? Like you're just the guide. Mm-hmm. Simple concept, but most oh. brands, I think, totally miss it. Yeah, that's um, one so, I just picked up again. Yeah, to reread yeah. because someone in my mastermind, uh, he was like, "This has got to be like the best marketing book." That's just like kind of underground. It's super simple, but yeah, building a story brand. I mean, it's legit. And mm-hmm. then there's a whole plan behind there, kind of like you have the giftology uh, plan, yeah. you know, that you could just kind of swipe in for free and use. Yeah, so. <laughs> no, he's, yeah, Donald's brilliant. I mean, yeah. talk about a guy from marketing. I mean, writer. Yeah. He's got a heck. Of, I think he's got like thirty employees. Um, and podcast and certified too. people and podcast. <laughs> I mean, he's just he's just he's just crushing it. Yeah. Um, and and just a great kind human being too. So I, I yeah. love you know advocating for people that are world class, but also are nice people. You know, mm-hmm. people that you know, you <laughs> yeah. actually want to go have dinner with or <laughs> have, have your family meet. You know, right. versus some of these guys that are you know they might be successful in, in one area of their business, but I wouldn't necessarily want to uh, to invite them on va- on family vacation. By totally. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So, well, awesome, brother. Well, get out of here. Go back to your family. Um, thank you so much time for your time. I think this was uh, it was just crazy right off a plane, jumping onto a podcast. So much <laughs> yeah, appreciated, no, brother. Thank you. Thank you guys for uh, for having me. And I uh, look forward to, to sharing this with my tribe as well. Sounds good. Thanks, man. Thanks so much for tuning into that episode. I hope you dug it. I know Joe and I dug it. I actually kicked Joe out of the room. He's not here right now because I wanted to tell you about a tool that I really, really dig. We use it in our business. We recommend it all the time. It's called Easy Webinar, and it's a tool that lets you do live webinars, automated webinars, hybrid webinars, and uh, you know pretty much any other kind of webinar if there are other kinds of webinars. But anyway, this tool is kind of like your all-in-one do-it-all tool for anything webinar related. It's easy webinar. It's put out by a dude named Casey Zeman. He's been on the podcast. If you haven't listened to that episode, it's a killer episode. He's a really smart dude, but his software is amazing. It does everything. It's, you know, the title tells you exactly what it does. It's an easy webinar platform. And we use this in our business to run automated webinars all the time. We don't do a lot of live webinars these days. We like to do the kind of automated webinars where somebody can register and then it, you know, they can either watch it like 15 minutes later or they can watch it the next day, but it's just kind of always running. And it's a system that helps us make autopilot sales off of our webinars. Super cool tool. If you haven't tried it yet, you know, it's, it's, it's an amazing tool. And, uh, Casey is actually hooking you up. He said for listeners of Hustle and Flowchart, I can't believe he's doing this, but he said for, for listeners of the Hustle and Flowchart podcast, he's giving 25% off of the membership to use Easy Webinar. It's already super, super inexpensive for what it does and all the cool features it has, but he's hooking you up with 25% off because you're a listener of Hustle and Flowchart. Go to easywebinar.com slash hustle. That's where you can get that 25% off discount. That's easywebinar.com slash hustle. It's a awesome tool. You're going to dig it. So just go grab it. Check it out. Easywebinar.com slash hustle. See ya. No, not see ya. You'll hear me in the next show. I don't know. I don't know how to close these things. Go get easy webinar. Talk to you later. Thanks everybody for listening to this episode of the hustle and flow chart podcast for taking the time to listen. We want to give you something a little bit special. Every single episode that we do, we actually have somebody on our team take notes. We basically have a Cliff's Notes version of every episode where you can go and find all of the tips and tactics that they laid out, all of the resources that they laid out, all the good stuff from this episode. We actually have a nice, simple notes version that you can find on our website. So go to evergreenprofits.com, find this episode that you just listened to, and uh, give us your email address, and we'll send you the notes. Thanks for listening. Mm-mm-mm-mm.